100 yes. people, we will be we uh, giving those 100 people uh, temporary infiltrator access to the game wow. for one week. So you guys can get in game and actually start playing and practicing over this week. And then next Saturday, we're going to do a really big event with all our current infiltrators, all our developers, and the hundred new people who will now have been playing the game for a week. And we will have a just massive all-out and out war to see who can capture the galaxy and, more importantly, who can crash the servers first. Now, our infiltrators are here already know that if you are the person who crashes a server, you get some pretty cool rewards and forum badges and all that stuff. But for the people who don't know, you will also be able to earn those same rewards and stuff. And the objective is, well, first of all, to out and out destroy everyone else in the universe. Secondly, to crash the servers. Just crashing the servers. To destroy the universe. To destroy the universe. Yeah, so destroy everybody else in the universe and then destroy the universe. So basically, exactly. basically what we're doing is, um, you know, we... One of the goals or one of the reasons why we need this Kickstarter is to support our infrastructure. You know, at the moment, we don't have the uh, infrastructure to have <clears throat> quite as many people as, A, we would like, and B, we expect. So uh, what we want to do is we, we've, we've worked really hard on our, on our back-end code and everything like that in order to try to be as efficient as possible with what we have. So now what we want to do is we want to push it to its limits, right? So we want to let everybody in. Let them check it out, and um, and break the server if we can. And if we can't, then awesome. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So, so in order to do that, which hopefully everybody's excited about, uh, if in order to do that, then we need to get a hundred viewers, so that way we can really reveal how we're giving out this these things, so that way it's fair for those people. Um, okay, someone asks uh, how we crashed the server, how we crashed the server previously. Most of it is bugs. So far, we've never been able to reach excessive demands on the server. I think the strongest demands we've been able to reach on it were like, I think we used like 4% of its CPU and like turned up like 15% of its RAM. Like it's really hard to, our servers are incredibly efficient. So it's pretty hard to tax them to that point. So typically it's like bugs. I think the last thing that crashed, the last infiltrator who got the award was someone who somehow managed to crash the server with FTL. I don't know how exactly they managed to do it, but they FTL'd and then just everything went to shit. Hey, Calvin, I don't know, even know if that's how to pronounce his name, but Calvin, you're the, you're the guy that was doing the live stream earlier, right? Oh, God, delay. All right, well... Um, okay, well, to the, someone asked, he'd be interested to know what the server specs are. The server specs aren't that important in reality. It's, it's the server software that runs on it. But the, uh, our current infiltrator server is like a dual CPU octa-core with hyper-threading. So it, it comes out something like 32 or 64 uh, logical threads. And, um, and then we have like 32 gigs of RAM. Yeah, that's about it. It's it's a pretty cool system. I I gotta admit, um, but yeah, our probably our live servers will probably be even stronger than that, just to be able to support all the players. I mean that that's why, that's why we have the premium account and stuff like that in there because you have no idea how expensive those servers are to run. But we figured that it's it's worth the price to put the extra money into the servers so more people can play per galaxy per map. And because uh, you know that's what the fun of the game is. I mean, if if it gets to the point where only like a thousand people can play together per galaxy, it it kind of defeats the whole point of the of having a true MR. Yeah. So we really went the extra mile with server hardware and stuff. So right now we're at about fifty three. Uh, fifty six. Sorry, fifty six viewers. It's just audio um, right now, so guys. you know it's climbing pretty that. steadily. Servers Make sure to go out there and blast it out there. As soon as we hit hundred, we're going to reveal the the system to be able to get in on it, and everybody who does that. Will as uh, or of the, the you know the hundred people us, that are there, uh, I'm jump in. they will uh, get in. Yeah. So uh, there's a quick question that they backed the the project on Quickstarter, uh, Kickstarter. Quickstarter. I wish it was a Quickstarter. 
Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> so uh, he hasn't gotten his activation email. And uh, why is that, Nick? Okay, so the way Kickstarter works is that they take they take a promise to take your money and then hold that until the project is fully funded and is over and then they actually tell us who's back and everyone's back. So right now we don't know that you've backed yet so we can't send out the keys until the project actually ends. So for those people who have backed us on Kickstarter for the Infiltrator program and stuff like at those tiers and above, you won't actually be receiving the invite into the program until after the Kickstarter ends. Yeah. Um Someone above asked, uh, how do you plan on making it seamless without loading streams? Well, there, by seamless, there, part of it is the no loading streams, but it's mainly no instances. So it's not like you go into a battle and then come out of a battle. It is just one massive map that you can keep on going in any direction for pretty much ever. Um, that's what we really mean by seamless. There's a loading stream when you start up the game, obviously. But the point is that there, it's not like you encounter a player on a map and then you go into like a 1v1 or a 2v2 match. It's just one massive, never-ending RTS map. And we made that happen all together because it's... We did a lot of really innovative things with the server architecture. Like, in a sense, actually, it's not one map. It's actually like a million... It's a exponential number of instances that the galaxy is divided up into, but they're all linked together. So we can actually focus more server power on specific areas in the galaxy where there's battles to reduce lag in those areas. So there's a, there's a lot of questions about uh, what happens if the Kickstarter doesn't succeed. Um, first of all, our primary focus is making sure the Kickstarter does succeed. But um, we are already uh, approved for... Steam and everything like that. So, uh, you know, the main point we've we've learned a lot from this current Kickstarter experience, and we've learned about like the pros and cons of using Kickstarter. The main point of it is is that we are going to continue to make this game. We're going to have some sort of way for you guys to be able to help us the, out. The most important thing right now is that honestly, we need to make sure Kickstarter does succeed, though, because we yeah. will figure out some way to get out the game. Um, we may go try like the. Uh, the what do you call it, star citizen route of giving away the rewards through our website, stuff like that. But the real key is you have no idea how much strain it will put on the studio if the Kickstarter is a failure. We will get the game out somehow. How just yet? I don't know because there still is more work required before we can go live for it on um, uh, before we can go live on Steam. Yeah. Have no fear. We're not just going to like crawl o crawl over, but or you know curl up and go away or something like that but at the same time you know absolutely please put all of your focus all of our focus everything into making sure this is successful which so far I mean uh, we were we were talked about by Rooster Teeth which was really cool um, Nick do you have anything to say about that or oh, I'm answering questions typing I'm being oh, oh okay yeah we uh, we we got featured by Rooster Teeth, which was awesome. That um, We're continuing to reach out to YouTubers and streamers and everything to try to get our name out there. Um, if you know somebody who might be interested in the game, by all means, you know, get them in touch with us. And, you know, obviously we want our name out there. The more we can put our name out there, the better off we are. I tried working on, on Reddit, but um, there wasn't enough traction yet. I might try again in a little bit. Or, like... In a, in a day or two and see whether or not we can k get that into kind of public consciousness. We're now at 62 people. So we need, we need 38 more people and then all you guys get into, uh, into the game. I would like to point out that this access will, liter will only be for this week, right? So this is not a full infiltrator access. This is just uh, give you an opportunity to get into the game, get it installed, um, try stuff out and uh, and then be there for the live test on uh, a week from today. No, there won't be an NDA required for this week then. Just if you are going to stream it or make YouTube videos of it, please make sure to state that this is still in early alpha and there's still a lot of development and stuff like that that is required. Yeah, Nick, it might be, uh, might be time for you to do your NDA or ADA. AMA? Sorry, AMA. ADHD? We, this is time ADHD. for me to do my ADHD. Okay. It's always <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
yeah, so Templar, this is a seamless, persistent MMORTS where you build empires and capture planets and everything on one massive, never-ending galaxy. Um, we'll actually we'll be starting up some gameplay shortly, and you can check us out on Kickstarter here, and we should probably... There. There's the link to our Kickstarter, and... Oh, can you set, like, the Poobot thing to repeatedly post it? Sure. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> The poo bot. Can you get permanent access to the infiltrator program? Yes, you can through back in the tier, or if you were a part of. Um, what he's were, asking is is yeah. actually it's actually kind of an interesting idea. So for this week only, if you're the one that crashes the server, he 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 wants that person to be able to get into. Okay, yeah, sure. If you crash the server, clearly you are worth your weight in gold as a tester. So sure, anyone who does manage to crash the server gets permit. Their infiltrator access will be made permanent. How many restarts has the server had? Well, it's a development server right now, so restart. We restarted about four or five times a day. Um, but once it goes live, we'll probably restart it two to three times a week at the beginning as we're updating a lot. But when we restart the server, you, it still saves your empire and everything. So all it means is you just can't play for a little bit. When you come back on, your empire and everything is there. When you're talking about progress restart, um, oh. we, so, so there's kind of two different, there's two different worlds, right? So there's the infiltrator server, which uh, we can wipe. Pretty much whenever we need to, whenever we feel we need to, and then once it goes live, we're going to all have a new live server, and and so infiltrators will always have access to the infiltrator server, which is where where all of the latest, neatest stuff that we're going to be experimenting with will be on. So the being an infiltrator, infiltrator server, just for, the infiltrator server is our development server. So the other right. people playing on the infiltrator are the de developers testing out the new races, new weapons, new engines, new features, stuff like that. So what that means is that even when we go live, being an infiltrator will still be really cool because um, you know, you'll still get access to the latest stuff before anybody else does. And be able to and give then, your feedback on things you like, you don't like, and help test it all out. Right. So then the live server uh, hopefully won't need to be wiped ever. And then also, as we announced... Earlier this week, we will also have like tournament servers where we can do temporary games like Hunger Games or, or um, you know, King of the Hill or you know whatever, which is going to be their own separate and distinct thing. Um, you know, one thing I was actually thinking about for a cool idea for a hardcore server, like a, a hundred game server, is have each resource have a limited, each planet have a limited amount of resources on it. So that all the planets will run out of resources. So you need to capture the other people's planets, stuff like that. Otherwise, like your empire could just run out of resources and die, like starve to death. Like you need to go capturing the other planets really quickly and capturing this, the other uh, enemy planets and their their stockholds and stuff because you can't mine the planet past a certain point. And maybe yeah. you'll only have like enough resources to build like half a fleet. So you have to really use your units carefully because if you're losing more units than you're able to generate through capturing other planets and stuff, you will just you'll reach a, uh, an impasse where you don't have any more money to build any more units to capture any more planets to generate more money. And you'll just like, fall out of the game. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that sounds really cool, by the way. I, 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 really, I just came up with that right now. That, that's actually, that, that, that has to be one of our like, regular uh, hardcore servers. That's one of the really great things about having this hardcore server thing is that we can like just be like, hey, wouldn't it be insane if we changed this little thing? And then in a week or so, we can have that happen. So, so this, could, like, this is going to have three different kind of things. You've got, you've got the infiltrator server, which uh, has all the newest, craziest stuff going on. You have the stable live version. And then you have like basically the melting pot of just like crazy features. We can just try out whatever we want, break the game however well, we and want. Not only that, but it's 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 so easy for us to change the core rule sets to the universe that we can allow the infiltrators and and the just all the no novice players to decide on what they want to change. So everyone can like vote 
a week ahead of like what would be the key things. And then we'll pick like the top 10 that are easy for us to add in. And then you guys pick like, what do you want? Like, what do you want? No Fortress Shield, limited resources, or a mixture of no Fortress Shield, limited resources, and no alliances, or maybe two massive alliances and only that. Like, you guys can decide like what kind of rules you want. And then we can put it up for a weekend and we can see. And who knows? Maybe if we come up with an idea that everyone really, really likes, we could even incorporate it into the main server. Uh, so if I had compare this, would this be oh, closer? Sorry, to, oh, so if I had to compare this to an MMO, would it be closer to WoW or Planetside 2? <laughs> it's, um, it's not. So those are both. So that's an MMO R, uh, RPG and an R, MMO FPS. So I think gameplay style. Actually, no. I, I think I try to understand what you're saying. Like, and what experience does the player have in the game? I would compare it much more Planetside 2 because Planetside 2, yeah. from the moment you get in the game, you can be in action. You can be. Uh, enjoying the combat of the game right away. You can, you can have your fleet up and ready to battle within an hour of being in the game. It doesn't take that long. Whereas in World of Warcraft, it takes a long time to build up before you can get into PvP. And the that's other thing the one about, thing we don't have that at all. Yeah, the other thing is, is that um, uh, MMO, uh, MMORPGs like World of Warcraft um, it, are very, very reluctant to let you make changes to the game world because everybody kind of has to be able to continue to experience it. This is all about creating changes to the game world, right? Like, like the game world changes as we go. You are the content. And so in that sort of sense, it goes all the way from, you know, the, the systems will continue to ebb and flow in power. You know, different power blocks will rise and fall. But even to the point of, like, our skins and stuff, making indelible, or not indelible, but permanent-ish changes to the, the very universe itself. Like, in a very real way we are facilitating a universe for people to play in as opposed to like World of Warcraft where they are constructing an experience and then you go do that experience. Okay, so someone asked a really good question. What uh, strategy games would I compare this to? Um, I would compare it to... I would compare it pretty close to Total War. If you imagine it, kind of a mix of Total War, like in the gameplay style where it's a bit slower, a bit more positioning tactics versus like Twitch micromanagement. Um, Company of Heroes, if you look at how the vehicles work. So how the vehicles work in Company of Heroes, ignoring the troops and the machine guns and all that stuff. Um, and then I'd also throw in a bits of Hearts of Iron in there just to make things interesting. I'd say, so like... They never actually made a really good one, but there have been uh, like Warhammer games in the few in that have made like art like real time strategy versions of Warhammer that wasn't Dawn of War. Dawn of War actually no, that's yeah, kind of like Dawn of War in its multiplayer mode, like yeah, where it's kind of kind yeah okay actually know. it could be no it's like Dawn of War in its multiplayer mode, but if each planet is like your HQ thing, Dawn of War two if each planet's your HQ thing, yeah. so you can capture more HQ so like that. Um, it really does have like a, a Warhammer kind of game because your point the battle system is so limited. Right. The Battlefleet got that kind of gameplay. That it has a lot of. Yeah. A Dawn of War 2. So, but so no, you can customize what I could a lot see. more than Dawn of War 2. That's a bad reference. Ignore that reference. Okay, fine. No, no I would talk I to could, the, but, the Templar. Oh, okay. I, I could totally see like people. Um, wow. Templar likes Warhammer. What a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> so I could totally see people. Um, like planning out their fleet before even building it. So like, you know, almost like a Warhammer. Um, we actually talked about this a long time ago about maybe even like an app or, or something in order or like some sort of separate thing. So that way you can build out your army based on the points on paper before you go to try to build it. Um, Silence implies that I said something totally wrong. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm keeping. I'm trying to like read everything that everyone's saying. Oh, okay. Uh, so it is. Oh, wait. Someone asked your question. How long will it take to build things, more or less? It actually, you'll be able to build things pretty quickly. The key is to maintain the pacing of a multiplayer RTS game, not like StarCraft, not a really, really super fast pacing, but a pacing where you can sit down, build a fleet, lose it, build it again, and lose it again in the span of, of one gameplay session. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's not like you have to spend a week building a fleet and then you lose it all in an hour and it's like, you know what, fuck this game. So one of the things is that we have levels of experience, right? So there's individual fights and individual fights will be relatively fast. They're fast to recover from, they're fast to get into, they're fast to do whatever. And then there are 
uh, like the tier above that, which would be like expansion, right? So expanding to another planet or you know some sort of establishment within the game, which might take a little bit longer. It might take a, lo- a little bit longer to take something. It might take a little bit longer to to hold something against somebody else. Uh, that might take a, you know that might be like your thing for the night or whatever. It's a little bit of expansion. And then there's of course you know the tier above that, which is like empire, which could take you know months to do forming alliances making agreements you know wailing down on some enemy whatever it takes um all right uh templar asked a really good question which is will battles take place in instances no they won't the map is literally massive it's just one seamless rts map you can take one of your units and go from one end of a galaxy to the other and it'll take about like a month to two months to get there. It's just one endless map. You don't encounter and then go into an instance or something. You just go flying around space, expand your empire, and you'll encounter other empires all around you. Um, Luke, when will we be able to hop in the game? Sorry, okay. So we, we'll probably be getting in-game pretty soon. We'll still be answering your questions or anything, but you'll be able to actually see some gameplay as well. So we've got, we need 22 more people. We need 22 people, so go ahead and uh, continue blasting it out. Put it on Facebook, uh, Twitter. On book face. You know. Book face. Friend, this fa- stuff. friend face. Friend face. Have you ever watched IT Crowd? Uh, no. You need uh, to watch IT Crowd. It's pretty fantastic. Um, someone asked, are there kamikaze ships? Okay. Yes and no. When a ship dies, it, there's a chance that it will explode. Um, and cause a shockwave and do AOE damage. So what you can do is, if you see one of your ships is about to die, you can kind of throw it at the enemy and kind of hope for the best. And it will do a shockwave and it will knock ships back. This also really affects the tactics of the game because you can focus fire on a specific ship, hoping that it'll blow over, it'll, uh, its reactors will overload and it'll explode, knocking back the other ships around it, which puts it out of position. Yes, IT Crowd is the shiznit, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it, it has a lot of aspects to EVE. I want to say that, um, you know, I'm a pretty hardcore EVE player, as you can tell by this right here, um, for those of you who know. Um, but at the same time, like, it's got a lot of the meta of EVE in the fact that you can, you know, make agreements, do trade, you don't have to be a combat pilot, you know, all those kinds of things. You can play the game how you want to play it, uh, and it's very sandboxy. But at the same time, it doesn't play like EVE in the, in the fact that it's an RTS. And so that does a couple of things. One of the problems with the EVE is that um, it is very obtuse. It has a lot of really, really, really complicated rules. And uh, it can be very difficult to kind of comprehend what to do at any given time uh, for newer players. Because of the fact that this is an RTS, which is fairly well-established kind of gameplay and plays pretty much like an RTS... Um, or it, it, well, it does play like an RTS. Because of that, it it's way easier to kind of grasp the game. And then at the same time, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit more engagement, a little bit less, you know, just spreadsheets in space or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the the other thing is is that uh, like in Eve, like they they the, one of the big things that they focused on was making it very realistic or very real, which means victories are real and losses are real, which is really cool. But the problem is, is that a lot of people, you know, they'll make their, they'll get their loss, and then they'll be very hurt by that, and you know, they'll lose, you know, two, three months worth of work in one blazing flash of a mistake. And while that's really cool for some stories and whatnot, for a lot of times, you know, that's not what everybody wants to experience. So, like, like we were pointing out earlier, individual things can be recovered from fairly easily. It's long-term things that might set you back or move you forward. No, no, so, the, it's the the issue. The things that are hard to recover from are diplomatic errors. If right. you make some mortal enemy, you're kind of screwed because that guy will keep attacking you no matter what. He really hates you that much. But uh, stuff like losing a battle or losing a planet or losing a fleet, that's not really that big of a deal. You can rebuild it pretty easily. So we want to focus on like the, the, the strong long-term elements to the gameplay really come down on the political end of the game, on who, who you made friends with and who trusts you. Because another thing that's really important is that um, pissing someone off or trolling someone in this game 
there's a, a real element to that that a lot of people haven't considered, which is that you have a universe that exists in the galaxy, even when you're not there. So you can't come in, troll someone, and go, ha I left the server now, what are you going to do? They can actually come and screw you over if they want to. Now, sure, there's a lot of protection systems to protect you and help defend you while you're offline, but still, it's still something that can... It won't be able to destroy you outright, but it can still do a lot of damage to you. So you really need to think through how you want to interact with the other players. A lot of the game is about meaningful choice, and, and I think... Um Oh, I can't even pronounce your name. Jay Hanon? Oh, gosh. All right, so he pointed out that you know losing one ship isn't that bad. Slowly losing your entire infrastructure can be bad. So basically what that means is that you know, you, because of the fact that this can happen over, the, over a longer period of time and whatever, it allows you opportunities to make choices, to uh, make strategic changes and everything like that, um, which... You know, this goes back to the fact that this game, in its heart, a lot of the stratagem of it was designed by, uh, you know, a military commander. So it has a very kind of over upper echelon oversight I don't feel think they to know it. About Jim. Uh, one of the members of Totali oh. Studios, uh, who actually really helped design a lot of the strategic elements of the gameplay, is a retired two-star military, air, uh, retired two-star U.S. Air Force Major General. I think he's the highest ranking advisor in gaming history. And so he really helped us out a lot in designing how the player would manage his empire and run his empire and how the, the big picture of the game works. Not exactly how a unit moves, more how the, the larger scale would work of really simulating these elements of uh, diplomacy, information, military, and autonomy. Someone asked a good question here. Uh, Ten veteran players curb stop new players. No, because there's something called a uh, CP, which is a command points, which is kind of like a really advanced form of population cap. People who have played any Warhammer game, not the video games, like the tabletop games, it's points. You can give, uh, you, you put the weapons, engines, shields, components onto ship hulls, and each one of those costs a certain amount of points, depending on how good it is. So the more veteran you get, the more... Uh, the more better tech you unlock and better ship hulls and stuff like that, the higher points cost it costs. <laughs> so, I mean, don't show me. I have all my Warhammer rule books there, the trophies. I'm a diehard Warhammer fan. Anyway. Um, so, uh, we're at 90 people. So, no, oh, we just two people down just left. Come on. Find them and break their legs. Beat them mercilessly. Uh, we want to get you guys in. Uh, what is the best ship you can get in the game? You design your ships, so the best ship you can get in the game is a ship that you design that's really good. At the moment, I personally have my opinion where, of what I think is the most effective ship in the game. But it's up to the player. I mean, for my play style, I come, I come personally from StarCraft. I mean, that was the roots of my RTS upbringing. So for me personally, the best ship for me is a Corvette, uh, no, no, sorry, a cruiser with three frontal beams that do really high damage with really low fire rate. So what does this mean in playstyle? I use them like marines with stims. I run into range, I shoot you, I stim pack to run away. And that's why and I just keep on kiting you like that. That's how I play with those ships, because that's my playstyle. Because that's the RTSs I come from. A lot of other pe people like massively armored dreadnoughts that they just hold this frontal line in man of war style, I mean in, in, uh, in British kind of like ships of the line style, like you shall not pass. Other people like taking ships and putting lots of side cannons on them, like lots of uh, broadside weapons and using them as um, using man of war style where you actually break through the enemy lines unloading your, your broadsides into the, uh, the enemy's flanks. So, I, I do the I do the hammer and anvil approach, which if you guys saw the last stream, that was used really well. Which is, you have a, a line of dreadnoughts that are heavily armored, but you put crap guns on them. But the enemy doesn't know that they have crap guns on them, so they're actually worth relatively little points. And then you have like a bunch of like cruisers or something like that that's fast with like some of the best g guns that you have on them. And so you bring up the, the, the fleet of dreadnoughts, and so immediately everybody goes, oh, it's dreadnoughts, and they all like, you know, bear on to your dreadnoughts with their dreadnoughts or whatever. And then all of a sudden these cruisers come flying in out of nowhere behind them and just rips people apart. So much fun. What are the size limits to ships? Yeah, so 
we'll, we'll be showing you some gameplay, and so that'll kind of clear up. Oh, we're, we're showing you some gameplay right now, which will be uh, which will clear some of this stuff up. Um, there are, are up, right so now, four size tiers of ships. Five. Five size tiers of ships. Um, and so... What are we doing? Oh, okay. Um, I'm just going to ask him. Yeah, so there's human master size. race. That's all you see in the chat. There's human master race. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, different, there's different size tiers that are available, and then you just kind of load whatever you feel like on those tier uh, are on those holes right so obviously the slow the faster ones are going to be or the smaller ones are going to be faster the larger ones going to have uh, more armor and the hulls themselves do have like an armor profile on you can uh, you can swap out different engines you can swap out different uh shield systems you can swap out different guns you know weapon systems all that kind of stuff Okay, someone asked, will shields, uh, will ships have special abilities? The human race's default ships of the line don't have many activatable abilities. When we add in capital ships, which is one of our stretch goals on Kickstarter, capital ships are all about special abilities, and also some of our alien races are very ability-based, and the game just went away. Um, will there be boarding action? We will eventually be adding in boarding action, but it'll take a little while. Now, someone asked a really good point, which is like, why is everyone so excited about reaching the 100 number? When we reach 100 number, we will give every single one of you temporary access to the game, to their beta, for one week. And next week, Saturday, at this time, we will have a massive like, stress test on the server where everyone gets to beat the crap out of each other. And whoever crashes the server will get permanent infiltrator access. Now, what an infiltrator is uh, for us, for the people who just joined in, infiltrator is like an alpha tester, but for the life of the game. So you actually play on the development server with the devs, and, um, and on that development server, you can see the new updates we're putting out, you can see all those things we're adding to the game, and give d feedback directly with the devs, and play with the devs, because that's the server we're playing on to test the new features. Will there be bi biological warfare? Well, at, in so far as there are giant space dragons that will eat you, they're biological. That's <gasps> warfare. You know, and also remember that. Oh, no, that's a good question. Remember the whole thing we talked about before, where the space dragons can actually like eat a ship, digest it, and then spit it out at another ship. Does that count as biological warfare? <laughs> but what category of warfare does that fall under? I don't know. So um, once. Rejoining their uh, channel right now. My chat went down. Wild thanks. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake wow. it into our. That's an advertisement. No, no, some, someone says that we must be able to drop Nokias on planets. There, there must be like a... The, oh my god. Uh, one of the cool things of the game is that there are artifact weapons, which are like... Um, which are light components, cannons, engine shields, but there is... Uh, but you can't actually produce them. You just find them on planets and throughout space. We need to make an artifact cannon that's designed for bombarding planets that shoots Nokias at the planet. We, we must have what that cannon. What would I do? It would just obliterate the planet. It's a Nokia, dude. Like the, the old Nokia phones? You know, the oh, ones we're at 100. Like Shut up. We're at 100. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nick. Yes. How are, how are we going to get these people uh, okay. into the game? Um, first of all, everyone needs to make sure they have an account on our um, website. Uh, link um, I'll, I'll get that link right now. All right, so the oh. first thing you do is make sure you have an account. And then uh, you need to send an email to an email address. What email address are we going to use? Yeah? Oh, 
Okay, um, I just thought, okay. Uh, first of all, everyone needs to make an account on there, and then you will email, uh, what email address can we use, Luke? No, your email address is spammed hell in fact. No, no, don't we have, like, a, a support at Tatali.com? Oh, that's right. Okay, so everyone go and register on that link right now. Um, so everyone go register. Oh, no, uh, Seabotty, um, that's your account login. That's not your in-game username. Your in-game handle has to be more than four letters. But the, your actual account name has to be more than, um, more than six. Okay, so everyone go and make an account quickly. And then after that, uh... After you make your account, you will send an email with your username to the email address that we're getting for you shortly. Now, another... Uh, I'm not seeing the link. There's the link. Spam! I better stop or I'll send it banned from my own stream. Oh. Okay. Um, I, I was, now, another cool thing, actually. The reason we're not live right now is because one of our infiltrators just managed to crash the server. Woohoo! Do, do we know what he was doing to crash the server? We don't, we don't, we don't know what he was doing yet. So somebody just got a badge. So it's not that hard, guys. It's not that hard. I mean, <laughs> come on. You guys saw it. And we can rest well, we restart the servers in like just 15 minutes. So a lot of people could get it. And remember, if you... Yeah, so the server's already back up. Um, we're, we're, gonna, we're setting up the email right now, and or we're setting up that stuff, and then we'll get back into the game. But, so, there's the thing. Create, a, uh, create an account at that website. Then email us at I think I know who crashed address. it. It was actually my best friend. Apparently, he, he just sent right now. Greetings, like, I tried to do something and then everything just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I think we also found out who crashed it. Now, I, I, w I wouldn't say that it happens a couple times a day. Also, uh, I would like to point out that uh, this would have to be this has to be a new issue that's discovered, right? Yes. Like, if, so if we so you, a known you can't issue. figure out the like crash. You can't just tell all your friends like do this, and then we'll start restarting the server every two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so if count. it ends up, if it ends up that that it you run into a known issue or something like that, then that doesn't count. It has to be something that we haven't experienced. And we post the known issues on our forums and stuff, and the status of where they are in development. So right now we are starting. Uh, so this is like the, our starting solar system. And now for the people who are asking, like, is it really seamless and persistent and stuff like that? You can see that it is. This is just one massive RTS map, and you can zoom out into the tactical view mode and just go zoom in all around space. Okay, we need we need an email address, like for real. We need an email address. Uh, Luke, did you get an email address? We are so ready for this. We, we are so prepared right now, guys. <laughs> we are like super prepared. No, but no, we can't. We can't. You, you're gonna get like 300 emails. You require Here, orbital bombardments. I'll we will be adding in orbital bombardments. Just one sec, we're first. so prepared that we're moving so fast that you guys don't even realize we already have this done. We move like faster than the speed of light. That's just how I'm making it up. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we must have a support email. We have to. Um, wait, wait, wait. We, we will figure this out. We'll figure this out. So in the meantime, everyone make sure that you have your accounts made so you can send it off right away. Uh, check your spam box. It typically sends verification emails into your spam. But even if you haven't received the verification email yet, don't worry. Like, we still actually have access to your account. So you can still just give us the account name that you used. Okay, this is the email address. Um... Oh, I think you can hear my son in the background. Hold on. Okay, I have an email address. Has everyone made their accounts? You just need to send your username in an email to this email address. <laughs> I, I just asked our forum guy, it's like, do you have an email with you? He's like, yeah, forum support? I tell it. I'm like, okay, prepare, you did it, spam to shit. Uh, no, 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 you'll be sending the email to this email address. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? No, 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 it's not, it's not your email address. Okay. All right. Are you ready? There we go. Everyone email that email address. No, okay. <laughs> no, wait! 
It's okay, you don't need to verify your account right now. Just put the username that you made into an email like, and send it to that email address, okay? Put your username and send it to that email address. Um, okay, well that was madness. Madness? But okay, we, we like madness around here. Alright, so yes. We'll be quote, so, so just, yeah. This is what? He's still trying to start his computer? Wait, is that mean he's watching like, the Twitch stream like on his Google goggles? What? Someone's still trying to start their computer, but then how are they watching the Twitch stream? Well, there's, there's an app. There is? Yeah, there's, oh, a, there's, a, a, oh, there's an Android app. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, <laughs> now, one thing is, is that right now in the game, we, dis we disabled the laboratories, which is how the research and stuff works in the game, as you saw in there, the menu is all grayed out. Um, that is because an infiltrator yesterday found a bug with them, and we're fixing those right now. So, unfortunately, we can't show you, like, how the research process works and stuff like that, but you can still, like, see the rest of the gameplay and stuff. So, just to say it out loud, just in case somebody's got their chat messed up, the email address is forum-support at tatali.com. So make an account and then email your username to forum support at tatali.com. Yay, perfect death is here. Yay. Okay, um. Now, someone asked a question a little bit earlier, um, and this someone like wrote it very obscurely, so I didn't even notice the question, and there's a horrible person that should always be ignored. Um, they have to be my best friend. Uh, he asked um, about the diplomatic gameplay. Will there be some kind of ranking, a public ranking system that players can know how trustworthy someone is? What it is, and we'll be adding in, not right away on release, but we'll be adding in a way that you can publicly, uh, what's the word? Um, like made a statement about someone's trustworthiness or not? Like make uh, declarations about Yeah, somebody? you made a public declaration about another player that other players will be able to see on that player's um, account. So you made a public declaration that this person is untrustworthy because of something they did to you. So I wonder, like, part of me wants to know whether or not there's going to, like, just going to send into chaos or whether or not, like, some United Nations will rise from all It seems to, this. like, desynchronize. Personally, oh, no, I think that as soon as the game starts, it will break out into all-in-out war. Like, as soon as the first server goes live, because everyone's going to be scrambling to get their chunk to the universe. Right. I think soon after that, uh, people are going to start realizing just how hard it is to manage an entire galaxy solely based That's on warfare right. and I think out of that will start to spawn some kind of uh, you'll spawn small sects wanting to form some kind of peace in their sector and I think over time they'll build a higher and higher hierarchy but one thing, I think that the first thing that we're gonna see the first kind of player implemented rule set is some kind of like Geneva Convention some kind of rules of war because we're not going to enforce that player, but I really foresee some kind of rules where say if you're going to attack a player, you must follow X, Y, Z basic rules of combat. Um, well, we're not going to imply them. Sir. No, no, no. We wouldn't enforce those on the players at all, but I foresee there being some kind of player-run system like that, where if you defy the core rules of what is warfare, uh, like just right in the real world, if you defy the rules of the Geneva, uh, the Geneva Convention, the Allied States can legally declare war on you due to break I I, I, I bet um, I bet that there's going to be like solar systems are going to be sources of identity. In what sense? So like this solar system, like all of the people within the solar system will form an agreement with one another. After duking it out or whatever, they'll draw the lines and then that solar system will become like a power block. So they don't mess with each other, but if anybody else tries to come in, they all will gang up on that. That's what I, I foresee a lot of actually. I pro there'll probably be a lot of uh, a, a lot of elements like that where I, I see a lot of temporary friendships being built out of necessity, like the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing. Because I mean, think about it. Like, say there's a person in your generic sector of space who just is always declaring war on you and stuff like that. He's probably also doing that to a lot of other players that he thinks he can overpower. So the way you beat him isn't by going one-on-one -on -one against him. You speak, uh, 
you speak to all the other players in the generic area, and I'm sure that he's done the same to them, and you can join forces with all of them, making a temporary alliance to, to take out this one guy. The reason we're posting the email is because we're giving away a hundred temporary um, alpha accounts. They'll be one week long, they'll last one week, to anyone who sends, to the first hundred people who send their, uh, their Tatali account name to that email address. And it, if you don't have a Tatali account name, you can register and make an Atali, a Tatali account at that link right there. And after you register, just email your username to that email address, the forum.tatali, whatever, uh, the forum-support at tatali.com, that email address. And then uh, the first hundred people who send their usernames in will have their usernames activated for in-game use and will be allowed to play the game all through this week. And next Saturday, we'll have a really big event where everyone can hop on, beat the crap out of each other, and whoever crashes the server names, um, uh, and whoever crashes the server will get permanent infiltrator access to our development servers. So I, w I kind of want to talk about what's, what's going on right here. He's creating a very interesting formation in the game. Um, it looks like he is uh, making his own kind of formation. Now formations are something that are going to be put into the game a little bit later where, where you can work with any of the custom formations, but it looks like, or sorry, any of the preset formations, but this is like a unique formation that he's created. Um, so. Once again, ships are mostly vulnerable, uh, or mo mostly armored in the front generally, uh, and and no ship has any weapon systems in the rear. And so basically, instead of having maximum firepower forward, he's created a circle, which basically means that you cannot approach his formation without uh, being attacked, which is which is kind of cool. Um, it's a very defensive formation. And uh, there are some counters to it. For instance, if the guy, if you have long range ships, you can actually just kind of come up to them on one side and then just shoot the one on the opposite side of the formation and still hit it from behind. You know, basically just shoot through the formation to the weaker ones. But um, all in all, it's a pretty strong formation for, for people that don't, that maybe not that many. The one thing to keep in mind about the back to back formation is that people can still penetrate that formation. And you can also try and shoot through it to hit the rears of the ships behind it. So you really need to make sure to use it at the right point in time. Yeah, it would uh, also be good. Once Sorry. the alpha key is when we once we get all your usernames, we'll activate all those accounts and an activation email will be uh, the activation will be sent to your email address and that will will activate your account. You can use the same account to log into the game and in the email they'll also include the information of how to download the game and install it. Also, uh, yeah, and if you're having problems, you know, check your spam filters and all that stuff. For some reason, a lot of a lot of times that gets caught in there. Um, caught in there. Also, I think we should probably stop talking about the email now, because I think everybody who's everybody who's seen it, or everybody who's supposed still to about see it. If it's still a race, the, well, the first hundred that get in, and also we may have like five or six people in here. I, I know there's three people in here who are already infiltrators. That's true. All right. Fine. So we'll, we'll still we'll keep talking about the email and the alpha access until there has been a uh, hundred people who have gone in. All right. Uh, what? Okay, so, so the guy who's playing just told us right now that we need to tell ev all the infiltrators who are watching the stream so that ahead. our planet is at, is the Jovian 1 planet in solar system what? In solar system 250. Um, so in that case, like anyone who's on the any of the infiltrators who are watching the stream right now, Come to Solar System uh, 250, Joven 1, and like beat the crap out of us. Bring it on. So, uh, I was talking to Kalivan, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably still mispronouncing his name, uh, earlier. He was streaming. He's pretty cool. Um, but he was pointing out, yeah, he, no, he's pretty cool. He didn't believe that I was me at first. He thought I was some, some hooligan or something. Kalivan. Kalvin. Kalvin? Calvin. 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 I said Calvin. He, he corrected me on that one. Oh. How did Calvin. he correct you? Can't hear what he's saying. 
Well, cool. he's he's saying it right there. Like he's trying to pronounce. I have dyslexia, oh, so you, good luck. Okay, Kaelvin. All right, so Kaelvin was was saying something, and apparently a lot of his uh, viewers have been asking for, and it, they think it'd be cool for them to be able to rename I will not planets. More dreadnoughts after we this, will. I we're considering adding in a planet name and function. The yet. thing right now about the way the planet naming works is it's actually a very organized system, where planet one is the closest orbit to the sun. Like right now, we're Jovian 1, which means we're the closest orbit to the sun. Now, Jovian 15 would mean we're nearing the edge of the solar system. So, like so you can easily find a planet like that. Otherwise, I mean, imagine if I gave you a map like this and said, find planet awesome sauce. Like you don't have to hover over every single goddamn planet to try and find it. The other thing is, um, uh, so one of the problems here, going back to to Eve, uh, like you can name your own station. Well, what so, I said I want to actually throw. In. Someone says it looks a lot like Senzo's Solar Empire. Graphically, there is a lot of similarities, but there's actually a lot of differences between Eve. I mean, as you can see, like um, uh, constructed on planets. But even more that Eve's ship combat is very simple, whereas our ship combat, you have directional armor, you, you have custom design Empire. units. Sorry, Senzo's Solar Empire. We have custom units that like you actually design your own spaceships and all the ships have fire arcs for their weapons and everything. So the combat is very, very different for me from Sinister Square Park. Aesthetically, it's, it's somewhat similar, uh, <coughs> probably because one of our lead artists uh, was on Sins, so. Yes. The guy who probably designed brings all the space, most of our human spaceships and stuff was the original lead artist on the first Sins. That's awesome. Okay, we have 60 males so far in, so there is another 40 infiltrator slots. Awesome. So, uh, and don't send more than one stuff. It only makes things terrible. Um, so, anyway, little story. Uh, the one problem that I, the one concern I have with renaming planets, and thankfully I don't make any decisions, um, was that the in Eve, they, you can rename your your battle stations or you know your your stations in in normal sec in the player owned areas. And so, one alliance took over all these stations and then renamed them all. Uh, Game of Thrones spoilers. So basically, anybody who tried to look at a list of, of the stations currently in space saw just these, just like 50 different Game of Thrones spoilers. So, oh, that's so you know, it's, yeah, it's not just you know, like oh, big Venus Avenue, like shit, yeah. planet, like you know, if you allow people to name name stuff in space, it it, it can potentially cause problems. Agree. That's really sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, that being said, if you rename, if you, well, the other thing is, is that planets are a little bit easier to take in in Elvis Turno than than in uh, than stations are in E. So if you rename your ship or your your planet, you know, spoiler alert, blah blah blah, then uh, chances are somebody will just take it from you before it can get around um, so another another one of the important things to bring up here about naming planets is that it's not so much about the planet it's more about the empire because planets will change hands very often and it makes it very difficult to uh, um, orientate yourself in the galaxy um. so speaking of orienting in the galaxies um, one of the other issues that one of the live streamers ran into or well that he ran into was that he actually lost his universe, so or his 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 um, his system, his entire colony. So, uh, are we going to be putting in something that allows people to keep track of where they are? In, well, in there's the actually a really space? easy way to do it. He just didn't figure it out. Which is, you see this interface that's open right now, and that, that just closed. Now it's open again. Now it's closed again. Um, <laughs> that is the. Uh, this interface is your empire management. Now, in this interface, it shows you your everything, your planets, the name of your planets, the population of them. And if you click on any of those planets, it'll jump you to that That's sector in space. Right it also shows you uh, uh, like where, what's different solar system the planets in, or everywhere. There's also a search engine for systems now, so you can search specific locations, like to find a friend's planet. Uh, can you name your shielded planets? You can move your shields, though, and you can capture new planets. Mm. So, again, it's not locked for that. So we're not sure exactly... 
what we'll probably end up doing something is like you can name your planet privately and like people who know you and have information on your empire would know the um uh would know the name of that planet that you gave it but it also has its its generic name so people can still orientate themselves so uh people are asking about what the next step is if you have registered uh on the website and then emailed us your registration information uh you've done your part uh one of the reasons why we're giving it a week is because like our system this is kind of a new thing um that we're doing so we actually have to go in and you know, manually allow the people in. So it's up to us now to, to get you in. Yeah. But and, we're, and as you can shortly. see, we're kind of preoccupied talking to you. To yep. Activating your account. Now everyone's going to leave. It's like, fuck off, activate me now. We're not listening. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly we go from 100 to like 12. Yeah. They're like, oh, we'll just wait. Uh, <laughs> Will there be interception of fleets during the travel from one system to another? Yeah, absolutely. Well, remember, because there is no traveling between systems. You're, you're moving there to there. It's it's part of the same map. It's like moving from one end of a, of a StarCraft map to the other. Of course, another unit could go and intercept you along the way. There is I'm no... Uh, it, there's not instances. It's not... They I mean, if you use an FTL travel, you can go straight to the system and you can't be intercepted. But we are planning on adding in certain capital ships and stuff like that that have FTL jammers that could force you to drop out of FTL. Um, FTL is faster than light travel, like warp speed. Um, but normally, I mean, it is just one massive endless galaxy there is no real uh i mean as you can no see instance, like right now it. he's right moving now, between systems please. right now this is this is someone moving between systems so one of the interesting things to point out is that so there's three different kind of speeds going on there's normal speed where i'm just like walking around and i'm you know slow combat speed, combat speed. spaceship yeah combat Solves speed the and then there's travel yes. speed where I basically you you know, you shut off your shields and your guns and all that stuff and just put all of your energy into your shields where you go a ton faster but you don't have any of your, you know, defensive systems and, and stuff like that. And then there's FTL where there's a spool up time, there's going to be a cool off period and th there's going to be a period of time where once again your defenses are down. Just but unlike travel speed, you can just drop out of travel speed and be ready to go. Like, you, pr you wouldn't even notice. As soon as you decide to shoot, you're just going to stop being in travel speed. With FTL, it'll be a period of time where you're basically vulnerable. So you don't want to necessarily just FTL directly into combat. That would be that possibly a mistake. Uh, FTL may be disabled. We're updating FTL. We were adding in, like, emergency jump drives and balancing FTL a bit. And I think in the process of doing it, one of our genius server engineers broke it. <laughs> um, it's Tom. It's because you gave him too much pizza. He had so much pizza, he's just like he's lost a, his mind now. He's, he's in a pizza coma. It's like, he's in a pizza coma. He's like <laughs> built a Ford out of pizza boxes. I don't so know I if he actually showed you guys. He actually built a spaceship out of pizza boxes. I did see. The um, picture I wasn't. I wasn't here for that. But oh, so you for those it? of you who, yeah, oh, for oh, those oh, of you who weren't yeah. there, um, oh, you know, we we were oh, talking oh, about how you know we're all just poor indie developers, and and somebody. Somebody took care of our, one of our engineers and, and yeah, pizza, you know, right? So someone asked in the live stream, like, can we send pizza to Tom? And Tom was like, yes, please. <laughs> and so it, <laughs> and it came a thing, and like, he received like eight different pizzas. <laughs> he actually had a line of pizza guys outside of his house. That is the most amazing thing ever. You guys are amazing. Well, um, guys, thanks for watching. In fact, I think, me. don't we have I'm a highlight video right of that? Now. Are we going to make that available on Twitch, I think? I don't know. No, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in this Twitch stream, like, don't go and leave now. You're still watching us. But, um, don't leave us, please. Uh, but yeah, in the other video, you can actually see Tom, like, receiving his pizzas and stuff. It, it, is, it is pretty incredible. All right. Can you have it for testing? What? what pizzas? Well, no. what? Yeah. <laughs> it's pizzas. No, he's talking about FTL. Um, oh. FTL will be in. It's just temporarily, we're fixing some stuff, so we may have just taken it down. Um, no one tells me anything. I just run the company. Things <laughs> changed very, very quickly on the server. Uh, like, and I hope you know, things can be fixed, die. things can be added, uh, uh, you know, whatever, very, very quickly. So, um, we'll also probably try to have more presence kind of in-game and also on the stream oh, and on Facebook flying. and everything else so that way. Because we want you guys to, we really want they're you guys to spend this next week cool. getting it figured out and everything like that. So... You know, we'll, uh, we'll definitely this is, be there. This is also a main test it. working out this whole system. So when Kickstarter is uh, successful, we can distribute the keys and we know how to do it and see how we can streamline it, what issues we run into. Make sure you guys click that follow button. Oh, oh, found some bad guys, but they're underneath the shield. So. <laughs> this video made me not a I'm hungry. I'll screw you guys Bring now. Bring some people over here. 
Oh, yeah. Just reminded me that I'm starving. Send Nick pizza. No. So, yeah, send me pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I don't need pizza. Uh, I have food in my fridge. That was that was a giant K on the planet. We have we Ship we were experimenting with uh, possible Kickstarter planets. Although I will say that the the uh, the Kickstarter planet that we ended up with uh, awesome. was way 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 cooler than just a K. Also, uh, the, that that planet is protected by crispy antivirus. <laughs> no, we oh, actually oh. screwed up the logo. The Kickstarter logo is a square black thing behind it, and Kirstrippy is the round one, and we put the round one. So actually, it's a Kirstrippy planet, not a Kickstarter planet. Oh, oh, we found a vulnerable guy. Oh, you're not... Oh, with one dude. Just one guy. Did they attack that? Just one guy. Oh. He's going to attack that one guy and not even have the common decency of actually showing it. That's okay. So if you look at the double arrows appearing above the, the ship's uh, head, I guess, uh, that is an indicator that they're in travel speed. Someone asked, will there be blockades and shoes? Yes, there will, but it's a open game. I mean, if you want to blockade someone, you need to place the ships around his planet. If you want to siege someone, you need to put the ships there and orbitally bombard him and block trade routes and stuff. It's it's up to you. It's not like there's a, oh, I clicked the blockade button, and oh, now you're blockaded. You have to actually do it. The tra Trade Federation. Oh, you didn't even try diplomacy with them, Luke? No. Uh, oh, oh, oh! Diplomacy has failed. <laughs> <laughs> Diplo uh, diplomatic <laughs> conversations have broken down. <laughs> <laughs> this is diplomacy. Yeah, don't worry about making sure your account's activated right now. Just make sure you send the email with the username, and after that, we'll get it all sorted out. So what he's basically trying to do is find a position of power. He's got much smaller ships than the enemy does, and so he needs to focus on agility rather than outright strength. Because it looks, as you can tell, he's kind of trying to surround him in order to try to give give him fewer options. He has to show his, his rear to somebody. Um, and then he's got that block of guys kind of off to the side. As soon as a, as soon as a, uh, exp a weakness is exposed, he's going to swoop in with the... Yep, looks like he's moving them in right now. So those guys are going to come in and try to attack at the weak spot while everybody else is kind of distracting him. This is a little bit like the hammer and anvil, although, you know, more like cotton and anvil. But, you know, whatever. Cotton butt and anvil. Poke him with the cotton butt! <laughs> Uh, the enemy appears to... Are those, those are dreadnoughts, right? Yeah. So the, the, the big disadvantage of the dreadnoughts is that they are much, much slower. So he can continue to kind of strafe around it and harass them while taking minimal losses. Um, and, and also, his individual ships are actually worth much, much, much less points in all likelihood. So even if he gets a couple of the dreadnoughts, he's going to do some splash damage because of the explosions, everything like that. Except for it, it seems that they, he has basically uh, formed up against three sides against them. And uh, the enemy has predicted that, or at least has compensated for that. So it's created kind of a pseudo triangle where it's very difficult to find a target without being just trounced. So, so it's actually uh, looking very, very bad for our player. Oh, wait, one sec. Someone's asking, what do we do with the email? We still have a few uh, keys left. So make a account on our website if you don't already have one and then send your username of your account to that email address. We still have like 30, 20 to 30 alpha keys left. We're giving away 100 temporary alpha Anybody keys to the game. So you can get in-game, play the game, for a get week, and channel. next week, at this time, on next week, Saturday, we'll be doing a big event where everyone beats the crap out of each other on the servers and tries to break the servers and really stress test them. And whoever so, breaks the servers will get a permanent key to the game. It looks like, it looks like, uh, you our, can, our you players... You can have Alpha forever if you buy the $100 Kickstarter tier, um, or also uh, if you manage bucks. to break the servers Anybody in the event next week. Who's wondering. Yep. So uh, it looks like uh, our player is actually better when he's not paying attention because his two his his forces that he left behind actually managed to kill somebody who had come up on them somehow. So if you look, they're injured. I'm entering the oh, never mind. They, they, he just crossed by, by him. Well, he did some damage, um, and now his backup forces, which should have been going to his other uh, to the planet to attack and reinforce his enemy troop or his troops against the enemy is now uh, abandoned the, sh the, the faster ships to their fate and is going back to defend his home planet.
Alright, someone asked, uh, will the remains of destroyed ships create like ship graveyards? We will be adding that in. It's not in the game just yet, but we want to add in so you can actually you can explode a ship or it can also just break down and you can try and recapture it, repair it and stuff. So there will eventually be ship graveyards. Um, someone asked, what happens if I break the servers during the week? If you find a new bug that hasn't been discovered before, you will get... Um, you will get permanent alpha access. Now, that doesn't mean you're supposed to not back us on Kickstarter and stuff, because we really need the support on Kickstarter. I mean, it looks like the game is really far away, but uh, it's, it's like almost done, but we really need the help, because that is what funds these last months of development to actually finish the game. I mean, you guys have no idea how hard it is to make an MMO, and we really, really need the support. So, like, tell all of your friends, like, start building your alliance, like, get your friends from EVE or from StarCraft or from whatever other games and start planning your alliance and get everyone in so you can all be playing Alpha together. What is the subscription option once the game goes live? This is a good point, okay? Ah. Um, the game is a one-time purchase. Uh, it will be about $40 on Steam. We've already been accepted by Steam and signed the contract with them. Um, they love the game so much. We skip Greenlight. They're like, must has this game. Mine. Um, and then David Crunch. Your paper, sign it. Um, and then I just ran away with our alpha and started playing the game before. Uh, and then there'll be a $10 per month premium subscription, which is more like a quality of life thing. It helps you out, manage your empire while you're offline, sends email updates if you're under attack, stuff like that. I mean, it is really helpful and pleasant, but it doesn't actually help you compete against other players at all. It just kind of makes everything a bit easier to manage. Hey, how does the planet protection go when you're away? So, uh, okay, so when you log out, it, there's a series of kind of stages that happen. So when you log out, you know, obviously all of your ships can still have, you know, some sort of order or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so uh, after 15 minutes, then the AI pretty much takes over, which are very defensive. The first thing that the AI is going to try to do is consolidate your forces in order to protect your planets. So they're going to return, you know, if you had them uh, deployed or something like that, doing a blockade or whatever, they are going to actually withdraw back to your home planets for defensive purposes. From that point on, basically, at, if, if any of your ships die, they will respawn again after a short period of time to kind of represent uh, a planet that just continues to, to, to build its defenses. Um, so it's actually fairly difficult to... to attack somebody who's offline because their troops will continue to, to rebuild. Uh, the planet will also, um, you know, obviously defend itself in the same sense where it's hard, it's, you know, reasonably difficult to uh, capture somebody's planet because, you know, the people don't like being captured all the time. Uh, but meanwhile, simultaneously, they're pumping out, you know, ships and whatnot. Uh, and also during that time, that's when kind of the more, the, the more AI controls come in with the uh, with the premium services. So, like automated tra trade rates will be continuing, and also you'll have maybe a little bit more ideas about what, or you'll have more control over what the AI uh, can do. Like maybe your AI can pre-construct you uh, some forces that you didn't already have. Someone a good point here that um, oh, there's two points. First of all, what happens if we don't meet our Kickstarter goal? We will somehow finish the game, but it's really not going to be easy. And I don't know how we're going to do it just yet. We'll figure out something. We've been doing this now for seven years. We're not going to give up now. But we really need... The Kickstarter goal really makes it easy for us to finish. Well, not easy, but it, it, it makes... It, it gives us the funds we really need to finish this because there's some more server architecture, uh, software that we need to get, that we need a license, and also we need to pay for pizza for Tom and like food for everyone else. Um, if someone else asked a point, can you customize your AI? Yes, you can. But it actually goes in a lot deeper than even that. The basic AI that controls your units, like how they move, how they're at, who they shoot at automatically, you can customize that AI to it. So that is really, that's a really cool system. We're going to announce we'll that. Get back to, we'll get back to that in just a second. Something interesting just happened. That, so basically, an on-the-fly, without any sort of communication, or at least I, I assume no communication happened. So our, uh, our players have come across two enemies that were engaging each other. He uh, attacked 
he, or he's been already uh, attacking one of them, and so he keeps them hostile. But the other guys that are now firing at the ones that he was earlier attacking, he has now made the decision to set neutral. So basically, on the fly, there's been a decision made and kind of an agreement made, and hopefully the other side will uh, adhere to that. So this will either become a 2v1 or a three-way free-for-all, depending on what the now neutral party decides to do. Someone asked, will there be referral benefits? Once the game is released, we will be adding in some referral benefits. Right now, I think on Kickstarter, the referral benefit is that we could actually get the Kickstarter done and all of that. I mean, it's... Right now, we just need all the help we can to finish the Kickstarter, honestly. Um, One of the things is, is that re referral benefits are, are, by and large, kind of part of the era of, uh, of the free-to-play, right? Yeah. And this is not a free-to-play. So... It'd be also it'd be I mean, kinda... the other thing about this, I mean, the biggest thing about a referral benefit in this game is that your referral benefit is, is you, is that you get a buddy that you can trust to actually like, help build an empire with and stuff. I mean, I'm not, sure we'll probably add in referral benefits because everyone's doing it, but right now on Kickstarter, like the referral benefit is that we actually can finish the game nicely and like we don't lose power to our houses. <laughs> So if somebody asked a question, I want to address, uh, I'd like you to address it. What about lifetime premium? Uh, lifetime premium, we haven't settled on an exact price of it just yet, but there will be some sort of out lifetime premium. At the moment, there is lifetime premium. I don't remember what tier on Kickstarter it starts on, uh, but lifetime premium will be obviously significantly cheaper than whatever that tier is, but we will be releasing a lifetime premium of some sort. Someone just crashed the server. There's a possibility someone may have just crashed the server. Really, how many people do we have on? So apparently we have a record we have a record number of players on the server. It just crashed. Uh, oh wait, no, it didn't just crash. It Oh, it just lagged the fuck out. Oh, it's go. lagging it out. Like it now it's coming back. Oh, it must have had to... Oh, you know what probably happened? Huh. So many ships died all at once that the this area had to go through all the calculations. So this is what... So this is actually a really good example of, of why we need the, the, the Kickstarter stuff. So it's one thing to support a, a, a game that can allow 100 people on it. It's a totally other thing to have enough architecture to have 10,000 people on it, right? So, um, so like, y you could almost consider this like a proof of concept. Like, nah, it's, it's a lot no, it's 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 a lot further than a proof of concept. But I mean, like, basically, it's working. So now we can scale it. It's designed so that we can scale it up with infrastructure. No, we have all the infrastructure there, honestly, and it is incredibly efficient. The right right now, what is lagging is there probably is some loop where the server keeps asking itself the same question over and over and over and over again, and that's what's creating the lag. Stuff like that. I mean, so far, we've been able to get so many people on, and we can never actually push the servers to, to overload them, stress-wise at all. What it is is that there's just inefficiencies in the server code that we find that we then fix up. So how big is the, ga is the game download after the alpha key is acquired? Uh, at the moment, it's like... At the moment, it's like four gig, but that's because you're actually downloading two versions of the game, and there's the developer version, and it's really, really complicated. I mean, we haven't downsized the download at all. At the moment, it's about four gig. Someone asked, are oh, we looking at microtransactions for skins interiors? Yes, we will be. Um, and then you also have the premium account and the one-time purchase. But it is not free to play or pay to win. Right. Just need to make that clear. Um, it's four gigabyte right now, just because... Uh, we, we will be optimizing the download speed a lot, but because it's the developer version, like we haven't put a lot of effort into, develop, into optimizing the download speed, stuff like that. Uh, War Hero, you need to send... What, which request? Uh, he says that he sent a request through Kickstarter. I don't know what request he's talking about. So he's trying it again, it looks like, with that flanking formation, but with a slightly larger ship. But again, what's happening is that he's so yeah, far out, and it looks like these uh, dreadnoughts Kicks that he's attempting to plant. Is, are those even dreadnoughts? Zoomed out. Yeah, those are dreadnoughts. So the the ships that he's trying to flank, uh, dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts can. Oh, this is now the former ally now turned enemy, uh, and it looks like the dreadnoughts are rotating 
as fast as his ships can strafe around it, which puts him in an unfortunate position. Uh, you can actually opt what type of engines that you use, and so you can go for speed, or you can go for rotation, or you can go for a balance of both. Although last time I checked, right, my CP might is maxed out. That's why I don't have any more the, the, the balance of both ends up being not quite as good as just one of each. So. Uh, generally, people like to pick one engine and kind of go with it, or at least like maybe two speeds and then one rotational, whatever. But uh, it looks like this guy definitely picked up at least one or two rotationals because he's definitely keeping up with the other guys uh, or with our guys straight. Um, all right, did work here. Oh, so the key request needs to go to uh, this email address: forum-support at tali.com. We still have. Uh, some keys to go, I assume. Yeah, I think we still have. We still have. I'm uh, not sure exactly how many left. Um, so now, this is not the one thing that's important is that we're not going to be able to activate your keys and all that stuff right now because we have to do it manually. It's not automated, so we have to go and go through and manually activate it and send you the instructions and all that stuff. Where? Oh. All right. So basically, so they started here, here and moment, they went up here. I mean, here it does work, and we've had it in this whole time. Below just, them. I think we just. I'm gonna it's possible that them as we updated the different FTL up types of engines, it's up, possible we didn't tie it back into the engine, that's my plan. or there's some reason why it's not in right now. No also, but combat is we'll balanced without FTL in mind. FTL is not supposed to be an in combat like thing. Like you're not so like FTL was was is very overpowered at the moment, or at least the last time we demoed it, because there was no cooldown, there was no spin-up, and there was no weakness period. So you just jump around people all day, and it doesn't matter. But that's not actually what the game is based around. So so this kind of warfare is... Um, this is actually way closer to the way that uh, the fights are supposed to go, and maybe people are just kind of getting used to it. One of the things that noted is that there is a fog of war, so you know he could keep when he keeps ships behind... Unless he's scouted, those ships are actually not seen by the enemy, so he can actually bring them around to flank. Uh, I would just say that the chances are uh, he's just not... His his frontal forces just aren't armored enough. Oh, that's nice. What about doing things with the sun? Right, here we go. Like, put a smiley face on it? Maybe... Oh, oh, we could totally like the angry sun from Mario. Moving <laughs> out. Uh... Or like Maybe annoying sun, like, a, like the annoying orange of the annoying sun. Yeah, like a micro, like like you know, for microtransactions. So like you can microtransaction to make your ship look one way. You can make your, you can make your planet look one way. You can have like a really high up there microtransaction to change the sun. But in order to do that, you have to own all of the planets around it. No, really, what are we talking about? Like, what are Harvest we doing energy the from the sun. That sounds like a really cool expansion. Well, isn't that just a solar panel? Well, no, I, I think he's talking like Ring World, or, yeah, Dyson Sphere. Yeah, but uh, but that you have to build like really far away from the sun, otherwise it just gets incinerated. See, I think these are all their home worlds. I can't actually attack them. And there's no name, so that's what makes me. Think well, you know what you could do? You could just put. You know that actually here, brings into what I think is a much better idea. You can't really build one around the sun. It's too hot and too powerful. What you need to do is ignite a gas giant on fire with a thermonuclear reaction, and then build a Dyson sphere around the gas giant. I need to expand that, this that would work a lot better because they will so, try to kill this. Planet. And this goes back again to like this is what makes this game so freaking cool. Like we could add that into the game, and then totally not even tell you. Like, not even say it to anybody. And then someday, you know, Someone somebody's guy is, is like had a fight at the sun and had an idea about, you know, oh, sun's burned this way. And then they'd research it and suddenly they have the technology to ignite a freaking planet. Like, that's how things can be introduced with our invention system. That, that alone, I mean... I don't know if that's how it would be. Give me you know, bucks, we man. have that option. It's just a hundred. It's nothing. Can you Along collapse a neutron star into a black hole? No. Just no. Can you reverse the polarity of the... Never mind. Reverse the pol pol uh, polarity of the proton flow? Is that what it is? I don't know. I'm not a Star Trek fan. 
Uh, then you sh sack your ship by flying into the sun. No, your ships are smart enough. Like you think of it like I a real army. Enough, I mean, trying if you tell it, okay, yeah, tank. Twitch. There, drive off that cliff. I can't not actually. Do it. Press Doesn't matter how well trained they are. Like, no. We achieve nothing by this. I'm actually a huge Doctor Who fan. Actually, as a matter of fact, <laughs> so my cred. Um, if you look at the lights back there around my uh, my shelf. Those are I really don't parts. want to crash the game. That's my TARDIS yeah. Christmas lights. And then... No, absolutely! And then, uh, I've got a poster Tardis. of the, uh, exploding TARDIS, um, painting right there. No, I totally, I went to the, uh, I went to the 50th anniversary. Uh, in fact, actually, no, that's the reason why I wasn't at the live stream where he got the pizza, because I was at the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who watching it in 3D. <laughs> oh, wow, that's, that's... Oh, I know. That, that's... Yeah? Alright. And... We are ready for orders. That point locked. We will. Moving out. So, um... Also, guys, if this goes well and, you know, this whole thing happens, we can always uh, do these kind of things again oh. where we give people temporary access. Um, like we will for next week. Like next next Saturday, right, right. Well, what I'm saying is that if this goes well with this whole bringing these people in, yeah, we can do, we 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 can totally do this again. Um, and then you'll already be registered, and then all you have to do if is email or whatever system we figure out to make yell, this cleaner. Kick, but scream, uh, for them to you know, this is going to be a one shot like thing me, for this to give one. Away to but like you. we do have plans to to do it again if if this goes well. Do planets have realistic gravity walls? Yes, they have completely realistic gravity walls, and all of the ships are equipped to perfectly avoid the gravity walls. So no, ships can't be pulled. Yeah, come on, man. This is the like future. That. Yeah, this is the future. We got that stuff. What is that? Is that a Doctor Who toothpaste? No, this is actually the. Uh, this is the. It's the TARDIS string lights. It's oh, the okay. case that it came in. Can you reverse the orbit of a planet? No, you cannot. Just restart the server. So, that's all right. No, no, no. There's no Doctor Who spoilers. No spoilers here. This is a spoiler-free zone, guys. But uh, can we, can we ram, ram meteors? meteors into planets? No, you cannot. That's what you have cannons for. The whole concept of ramming meteors into planets is like not actually that effective. If you have this, if you have the technology to do that, you have the technology to make a thermonuclear orbital bombardment warhead that'll wait, do a lot more damage. But wait, Nick, though, what about what about one of the other races? Maybe they could go all like uh, well, the other races just beat up planets and smash them. They don't like planets through asteroids. But you could do like the whole like Starship, Starship Troopers Trooper, thing, where they yeah. like launch this giant freaking moon at at another planet, like, and just slams into it and takes out some city. Can I fry bacon using the sun? Yes. Sure. Requires a magnifying glass research, though. Can we make a Death Star? So uh, there Ooh. will be no Death Stars. There will be Death Stars. I'm going to build this There will be no right Death there. Stars. Uh, because, my ships are you know, traveling. Lucas Arts, my CPS full. Will, will my sue everything built involving anything that involves as far as anything. I want it to be right now. But there will be uh, at this point, not a I moon. Go be, I'll be right star, back. star base. That's How about that? Star base. <laughs> 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 um... Uh, asteroid, the, okay, now the thing is, is that you have, your alliances can build alliance projects. That's no moon bases, for example, is an alliance project that you can build. You also have, like, uh, warp gates that you can jump between different planets, which is not a stargate. It's very, very similar to a stargate. It's a round, puddly thing that you go through <laughs> that releases you out next to other planets <laughs> in the galaxy. And totally. you also have the, no, the that's no moon star. And, uh, well, what, <laughs> what other so, ripoffs yeah. should we stick in there? <laughs> so, there will definitely be, like, cool things to discover and exploration. Um, you know, there might be natural events and things there to is, find. There is, there are similar to a nid light NPC faction that just eats everything. But it's actually a playable faction. Can you colonize asteroids? No, because they do not have the gravity or the atmospheres to actually support life. You can colonize moons, though. I... Can you destroy planet? So, it's an interesting question. Uh, the can the that's no moon star actually let you destroy planets? Uh, 
If we could figure out a make a way to make it work without like that may be something like we add that feature in, but you can only use it on hardcore servers. Ah, ah. Oh, that would actually be cool. Can you imagine like every alliance, like it's a hardcore server where each alliance gets a that's no moon star, and they can destroy planets with it, and it's just like an all-out war to see who is left alive. Nice. Yeah, actually, um, we we released a. Uh, a concept art last time, or not last time, but the last time I was gone, for a capital ship that could very, very easily be a that's no moon type capital ship. <laughs> that gun's very big. Yeah, oh, they, they, okay, Looks so like, with server, yes, the server has officially crashed again. We have a lot of people online right now. It's pretty awesome to see this many people on and playing the game. As, our, as we put out a lot of updates, that today would be a big testing event for uh, you guys. No, the as you see, we're really open. We don't try and How's hide that? our ugly faces. We show them to you guys. Like, hey, look, we're beautiful. And um, so the server will be back up shortly. But this is... Uh, uh, so there's a lot of questions about uh, planets, effect, you know, planetary orbits, gravity wells, such and such. You know, thankfully we're not getting quite very many questions about three-dimensional combat, all that sort of stuff. But basically, so what the thing about strategy games is is that as the simpler the rules and the more concise the rules, uh, the more interesting the strategy is allowed to be, right? So um, when you start factoring in a lot of these little nitty-gritty things like gravity wells or something like that it actually like who really wants to lose the fight because of a gravity well like exactly. I mean, the concept is cool but you'd be right, so pissed off if you turn around and your capital ship like just falls into a gravity well of a planet mate like, kickstarter work no you made kickstarter work this is really not designed to be a realistic space combat simulator it's, it's meant to be right. a strategic dice simulator simulator so you know diplomacy intelligence military economics like i said it's a very upper echelon you know this isn't teaching you to pilot a battleship or a cruiser or something like that this is teaching you to look at the higher levels of things and you know better be fast, basically yeah. build an empire from the individual fight system. all the way up to the multi the multiplayer system. alliance when will we see? When will? Oh, okay. okay actually, so. the server did not crash. It was just that uh, Luke, the guy who's actually playing right now, because we can't play and talk because we're just simple developers. Um, his client just fucked out on him. Oh, okay. Someone asked, what happens if they crash the server due to server load, not a specific bug? If you guys manage to do that, like, oh, I'll give everyone free infiltrator. Act. I'll give you all fucking Lamborghini. What? No, just what? It, it's, <laughs> I, let's not hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's step back there, Nick. That is a legally Look, so binding far, verbal contract. So far, we've managed to get like 60 to 70 players on, and we do not even reach 1% of the of like CPU usage and actual awesome. server usage. That is awesome. That it is this game incredibly is difficult to overload the servers dude. based on the actual load because our server, our That's architecture is incredibly server. efficient. Is the problem we have right now is bugs busy. in the code that make it not as efficient as it's meant to be. Like, uh, like random loops where the server keeps asking itself the same question over and over again. Or one good thing, for example, is that the server, um, it has a lot of validation procedures to make sure people aren't cheating. And like one lag issue that we found is that it ended up asking the validation procedure over and over and over again. Because what would happen is ships would all shoot at one ship, and the ship would die from the first bullet. And then all the other bullets would hit the ship after it was already dead, and the server just started freaking out, like, no, you're shooting at something that's dead, you can't do that. And it would keep telling the client, like, stop shooting at it, it's dead. And the client would keep telling the server, saying, I'm not shooting at it anymore. And, like, they'd just keep talking to each other, and loops like that is what creates server lag. Not I, I actual, want, uh, not actually open.